Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have uh, a unique video. Listen, I need to mention this before I go into this actual video because I'm talking to my chat about this, okay? Not every card you see here is like a full meta monster, okay? They're just cards that are very unique for what they offer in game for the meta of the game and they play well in it, okay? So, you know, just like if I don't have a team of the year Cristiano Ronaldo in the starting 11 here, even though I don't agree with every single starting 11 player here, like Di Natale, I would replace for somebody else. It's, it's a matter of which cards are unique to play with in FIFA. Because guys, if we're gonna go really, really full meta, this is a full meta card, okay? The only thing that he's missing is a physical, like if I'm being super nitpicky, is physical presence, but his physical presence doesn't matter because of how amazing he is everywhere else with the player traits that he has, right? So that's what I'm trying to explain. Every card that you see in this team is unique in their own ways for the price that they offer because that's how that's what I feel like when I play FIFA. I look for something that just feels different. It doesn't have to necessarily be full meta. So what you'll notice is that there's no icons and there's like, to be fair, I think these foot hero cards are like the only ones that are actually really good, but there's no icons in this. Like, you know, not, you're not going to see an R9. You're not going to see a Cruyff, a Pele, and a Zebu. We can do that for a different type of video, right? Like the best meta icon card and stuff, right? But the team that you guys see here is players that I thoroughly enjoy using because they are unique in their own ways for the meta of the game. So I try my best to get like one list. I have a secondary team, but that I'm not as passionate about, but they're still in the team because if you use them in the meta of the game, they're still gonna be pretty decent, right? Uh, you're gonna notice that I don't have a player like Martial and stuff in this because I wasn't like super passionate about him. Not crazy with Ronaldo for personal preference wise, but his attacking AI is unique to uh, a different type of play style, right? So uh, guys, you're gonna see a lot of players that are rats in this team. <laughs> Let's be honest, they're very, very ratty cards. But at the end of the day, they play really well for the meta of the game, right? So I have to mention this, this is the most important thing because this is a best attacking AI, attacking a meta player you know, review. That's why I still have that secondary team to show you guys some players that I still like, obviously. But this is a unique one, okay? I have to mention, and I told this to my chat as well, this card 100% has the best attacking AI in the game, okay? Flashback Benzema, nobody touches Flashback Benzema for attacking AI. I'm very passionate about this opinion, okay? Because he genuinely moves across the pitch like an absolute monster. You can see it in the 3412 tactic video. You can see it uh, just when I reviewed Garincha, just the types of positions this card occupies to score opportunities for me. Now, here's the thing about Benzema's card, right? So with Benzema's card, on the hunter chemistry style i mention this to people all the time right but you are lacking in dribbling and passing on the card right so if we take a look and see here on the hunter chemistry style you're going to be giving him really good pace his shooting is going to be awesome it works really well because he has the meta shooting traits with the outside foot shot trade the finesse shot trade so it could be ideal to give him a hawk as well depending on the play style that you want but i need him to be as explosive as possible to utilize that uh, attacking AI that he has. So that's why I personally give him the Hunter. But guys, at the end of the day, Benzema is a six foot one player with an average body type. And by default, average body type is not super ideal in FIFA, right? So you do have to work with that. I tell you guys this all the time. It's that and the passing, but he overcompensates like crazy because his attacking AI is nuts. When you're inside the 18 yard box building up the play, this guy will open up the pitch for you like a monster, okay? The only player that I would say that comes close to the flashback Benzema card is genuinely the Mbappe card. Mbappe is the one that probably comes the closest when it comes to that like really insane attacking AI, right? So again, you do have to work with those things, but still a very, very solid card. Uh, next up, we have uh, Rat Yetter. Rat Yetter is uh, very good now. So what I will say is that if we take a look at Ben Yetter's card for this year, and again, this is always like opinionated stuff, right? I hated this card with a passion. I didn't like him at all. Okay, never liked him. Uh, I packed the 86 in for him on my burner accounts to use him. Uh, didn't like him either. But once the card got to this point right here, the 87 and the player of the month version of the card, because if you take a look and see the difference between him and the 87, you know, uh, some small differences here and there, but it makes a difference in game in certain situations, right? But Ben Yedder is so good because four star skills, five star weak foot already hits the bare minimum for the meta of the game. High low work rate, 
right? High low work rates with a unique body type. So once you get into those shooting opportunities, that five star weak foot and his center of gravity being low, it just allows him to take really good direct strikes. Now, I will say that when it comes to shooting with this card, you can give him a hawk, like I mentioned in the review, uh, to boost the shooting to be essentially perfect, but then your pace will be lower. So it'll depend on your play style, right? For me, I want players to be as explosive as possible. So the Hunter chemistry style, playing a card like this in the left striker area is super ideal. If you look at his traits, he also has the outside foot shot trait. So when you do power strikes with this card's strong foot and weak foot, it comes off really nicely, right? So a card that definitely suits the meta of the game really nicely too. Uh, Messi, as I was mentioning earlier, there's not much to say about Messi. And Messi, in my opinion, is a full meta card. His medium low work rate is insane in game. The way that he moves across the pitch is disgusting, right? His finesse shots are one of the best in the game, if not the best in the game. Uh, and then he has this crazy trait, the outside foot shot trait, to be able to score those power strikes across uh, the net as well. So some disgusting stuff. I think for this card, I gave him, I don't even know, did I give him like a basic in the review or something like that? And um, let's see what uh, this card actually looks like on the basic, because I don't remember what I gave him exactly. But man, if you guys actually see the shots that I took with him, disgusting, right? But on a basic, yeah, so basic is good because it gives him the shot power, the sprint speed, sh uh, the extra strength, and then 88 stamina is a really good cutoff for attackers in this game anyways, but the card is essentially full meta. So th these are the types of guys that I'm trying my best to stay away from, okay, for uh, people that are looking for the low tier cards, the price range and stuff, right, like that type of stuff. Um, Griezmann, Griezmann, very good card. Uh, I do think he was overpriced a little bit. To be honest with you, I, I do think that that was the case for him, but he's still a very good card for what it is. Why is he very good? Because he has both of the meta shooting traits. He has a finesse shot trait. He has the outside foot shot trait. If you're using a card like this, you know, playing through the middle, striker area, cam position, for me personally, I think that it's very important uh, to give him that dribbling boost, right? If you give him the dribbling boost, especially with the way that the gameplay kind of plays out, Giving him the dribbling boost with a unique buy type while being five foot nine, it works out really, really well in game. His high medium work rate is great. His shooting, you have to understand, is still in the 90s area. So when you look at the traits of this card, him having the outside foot shot trait and the finesse shot trait, mostly playing through the middle, it's being compensated really well. But if you're using a card like this in the side positions, which you definitely could because of the fact that he has the 90 stamina, you know, giving this card a hawk. It's good because the shooting boost is massive, right? So if you don't care about his dribbling as much, you could totally give him a hawk through the middle as well, but you just have to work with the dribbling a little bit more, like I mentioned in the review. But if you're using him in the side areas, a hunter will be the most ideal because you're boosting the pace as much as possible to work with the high stamina, high medium work rate, while giving him really good shooting boost with the traits that he has, right? So again, very solid card. I do think he was overpriced a little bit, because of the way that the card is formatted because i mean listen if you give him a finisher pace is still low uh you give him a hawk uh, you know it, there's gonna be things here and there that you're gonna be missing but the card is still really good i got him on my main account which is you know that's what i mentioned to you guys at the end of the video like whether or not i'd actually get the card on my main um fakir listen man a lot of people have already put this card into an SBC, which is in my opinion kind of crazy because fakir is like i said i i know that people when they play fifa they look for top meta the most meta that they can possibly look for but fakir for me this year there has been absolutely no card right especially in the beginning of the year midway through the year of fifa that moves like this card does in the cam position that shoots the ball that he the way that he does that even the dribbling like the dribbling you have to work with a little bit on this card just a little bit right but the thing is is that for this year's game guys this body type that he has it actually works out really well. A stocky body type. The SBC price was so low for this card, for him, for Benzema, like such a, such a low price. Like if you guys actually watched the review for Fakir, when I gave him the Hunter chemistry style, because I saw the stocky body type, I was like, before I even tried out the card, I'm like, this is probably a card that I'm going to use on my main account. Like I, I was like, I'm probably going to complete this card before I even touched him because he just looked really, really good uh, because... I experimented with some players that had the stocky body type and the stocky body type and the short and lean minus, they're better this year than they were in previous years, like in my opinion, right? So Fakir, still an absolute monster of a card. If you take a look at his traits, why is he a monster of a card? Because he has the outside foot shot trait and the finesse shot trait as well. So Fakir, man, like I'm telling you, when I was uh, doing the review for the 
3-4-1-2 tactic and I was using Neymar as the cam. You could totally do it, but Neymar has more of a physical side to his dribble, right? Fakir just feels like such a good cam to use. And I, I like that's why he was in my main account for such a long time because he offers that for me, right? So a very unique thing for the price as well. Um, EA did a fantastic job with the Ibrahimovic card. They did a really good job. Because I'm going to be honest with you guys, Ibrahimovic is like a, he's like a foot fan favorite, right? But every single year, because of the way that the dribbling mechanics worked, it always felt kind of weird for this card. It always did, no matter what. It just felt really, really weird. But because this card has been improved in certain areas uh, in regards to like shooting and stuff, I actually enjoyed using him. If you guys watched the review uh, when I got super lucky to actually snipe him, I know I didn't make a profit because when I snipe these guys for like when they're extinct, I sell them right away, right? Um, because I'm just trying to get the coins for more reviews. But this card, if I remember correctly when I reviewed him, if I remember correctly, was really sick to use on an engine. Why? Five-star skills, four-star weak foot. He's a physical type striker, which strays away from the meta of the game a little bit, right? Him, players like Murata, Icardi, right? But they're unique in their own ways. That high-low work rate, that unique body type on the engine chemistry style with dribbling stats like that, with, again, similar situation to Griezmann, right? 90s for shooting, the card is awesome to use. I thoroughly enjoy using him too. And again, if you look at the traits in game, he has the outside foot shot trait too. Doesn't have the finesse shot trait, but from time to time, you'll actually be able to hit them really nicely because his base card stats for shooting is actually set up really nicely too. Um, let's see what else we got here. So we have uh, these two. I only tried these two out recently. Uh, but what I will say is that the reason why they're in this list is because they're foot heroes, okay? That's like the biggest variable with them. Uh, Janola, honestly, I tried out this card. I liked him a lot. I, I thought he was a really, really good card. Uh, these cards are kind of like behind in the game nowadays for like the full meta aspect a little bit because here's the thing, right? So with these cards, I'll show you guys Janola. So with Janola's card, they're behind it, but they're still, they could still play really well in it, right? Uh, with Janola's card, um, I enjoyed using him on different things, right? So I gave him a finisher because the shooting boost is kind of crazy, right? And I just worked with his balance as it was because I didn't mind his dribbling uh, with the way that it performs. But for me personally, because this card is left-footed with a five-star weak foot and five-star skill, I really, really enjoyed using him in the side positions on an engine chemistry style because I don't mind the shooting setup the way that it is uh, on this chemistry style because for me personally, you want to try to work high percentage strikes as much as possible. And if he's the left footed player playing on that left side, for me, I just really liked it. And the thing is too, is that, you know, if the dribbling doesn't bother you too much in the side areas, you could obviously just give him like a hunter chemistry style and that would also be fine, but you would just have to work with the dribbling a little bit more. Um, Di Natale is another card as well. And guys, the reason why I didn't do a review for these guys is because I'd reviewed them super late. Like I didn't get them during the beginning of the game, right? Uh, Di Natale, when I tried him out, I don't remember whose account it was that I was using, but he had like a Serie A team of the sorts. Uh, and he had Di Natale Hawk engine. What was it on? I think it was on a Hawk actually. Yeah, I think it was on a Hawk because they told me that because the card is five foot seven, right? With what seems to be like his own body type, like which is kind of like stocky in game, he performed really well too, right? Even though he's a four-star, four-star player, the traits with the finesse shot trait, the outside foot shot trait on the Hawk chemistry style to be able to hit those shots, that's what people liked the most, right? And it kind of makes sense because five foot seven, center of gravity is really low for a card like this. So again, performs really, really well. Like I said, guys, a lot of these cards can be a little bit behind for the meta of the game, but I'm trying not to include full meta cards as much as possible. And you'll notice that there's not like a lot of icons, but cards that are unique in their own special ways. Uh, Mbappe is a default, okay? He is literally Glitch Bappe for a reason, okay? This is Glitch Bappe. Everybody say hi to Glitch Bappe because that's literally what he is. He is disgusting in FIFA. And I'm pretty sure he was disgusting last year too, if I remember correctly. Uh, this card, when I reviewed him just in the beginning of the year, like you can honestly, I'm not even joking when I say this because this is honestly the truth. This rare gold card is better than most of the strikers that EA have released recently, even if it's like an Icardi, uh, if it's an Origi, if it's a, like any of these like striker SBCs, this rare gold card is still better than those cards, 100%. Like this card is absolutely disgusting, right? Um, I think for Mbappe, 
I don't remember exactly what I gave him at the time. Was it a hawk? It might have been a hawk because Mbappe is one of those guys where it's like you notice the balance being low, but you don't care about it being low because one skill moves is crazy and he's glitched Bappe for a reason. So his dribbling still comes off really, really nicely. But the thing is, though, is that if you really care about boosting the balance, you can obviously give him a finisher chemistry style too to boost the shooting as much as possible, uh, to boost the dribbling as much as possible because his pace at the end of the day, by default, is still at a 97-97, right? So Glitch Bappe for a reason. Attacking AI, this is the only card that comes closest to Benzema, but most people would still use this card over Benzema because at the end of the day, his dribbling is better, his passing comes off a little bit better, so people would use him way more than a flashback Benzema. But you guys know me, attacking AI merchants, right? So using flashback Benzema is incredible. Uh, next one. Uh, this card was a little bit up there in price too, I would say, a little bit. I think I mentioned that in the review too. Uh, but Jelson Martins, when I reviewed him, I was actually surprised at how good his high high work rate was because of how explosive that he was. Uh, you notice the dribbling from time to time, of course, 100%. I'm not going to say that you don't, right? But if you utilize Jelson Martins in a certain way for this game, he actually performs really well, right? So um, if we take a look at this card or all of these specifics. The way that I've used Jelson Martins um, in this year's game, guys, has been mostly playing as my attacking oriented center mid, which is more fun than it is like super meta, to be honest. Uh, but this card, if you're using him in that new 3-4-1-2 tactic and you're using him in the right mid position, because of the fact, right, this is very important to mention, because of the fact that his default base pay stats is at a 98 to 96 and it's very obvious that you have to give him a dead eye chemistry style for the extra passing boost and the extra shooting boost this card actually performs really well in that area like i said i do think it was a little bit up there in price at the time as well like there's certain things in dribbling that you do notice right but the thing is though is that again the average body type doesn't bother me as much because he's being used in the side position and if you're using if you're utilizing him properly with a high high work rates and 98 for stamina with base card stats or pace being really high this card can perform really well in the meta of the game too very unique because to be honest with you guys like they have released cards like bamba and i and i remember doing the review for him too i'm pretty sure he's like very generic like it's a card that you can use in the meta of the game you could perform well with it but pretty generic i would say if you guys actually watch that 3412 video that i did using jelson martins in the right mid position is awesome like he actually scored a few goals for me because of the way that he opens up in that formation right so it just worked out really well for him like i said the dribbling you notice from time to time the weak foot you definitely notice because of the base card stats for shooting uh on the card being as it is with the dead eye chemistry style being improved on it but still very very unique for what it is so like I said, guys, as you guys notice, I'm this is trying to be as unique as possible. Like I'm not gonna be like, oh guys, like R9, Croy, if you know, like all the time. Uh Chuck Weze. Chuck Weze is the next one. Uh, this card surprised me a lot, but at the same time didn't, because if you actually take a look at this card in game, uh, the biggest hopes that you would have for him uh, is the high low work rates, right? So again, if you utilize this card a certain way, like let's just say for instance, you're using him as your left striker in the 3-4-1-2, or you don't mind him being the more aggressive left mid because of the fact that he's left footed on that left side, that would also work too, because his base card stats for pace, guys, is set up in a way where, you know, let's just say for instance, you were to give him uh, a Hawk chemistry style, right? A Hawk chemistry style, you know, boost the pace quite a bit while giving him a massive shooting boost with some extra physicals, which is always gonna be super helpful to work with. But that's if you're mainly using him in the side areas and you would have to use a dribbling a little bit more. The thing is though, guys, right? Is that he's five foot eight, but he has an average body type, right? So that average body type, I think, if I remember correctly from the review, I think I might have given him a marksman. And on a marksman chemistry style through the middle, he was performing really well because his high low work rates in game is actually a good one. So again, I'm adding him into this team because he's unique for what he offers. This card had less views than the Guidi card, literally because of links, because Guidi is a league one player, French link striker area, blah, 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 right? But this card is significantly better than the Guidi card, significantly. Thoroughly enjoyed using him. And it was funny because there was actually a guy in my comment section that mentioned to me in the video before, it was something, I can't remember which video it was, where he's like, Inception, you gotta try out Chuck Weze because his attacking AI is actually pretty solid with his high low work rate. And I'm like, let me see if these guys know the vibes of these guys, right? And I'm trying him, I'm like, like he actually moves pretty well. Super nice card.
uh, Neymar. So Neymar was very like hit or miss for people, uh, but that's why in the review I mentioned to people that um, it's a card that I would mainly use in the side positions and I would through the middle because he has this like um, this physical thing to his dribble, like I mentioned in the review. Um, but the thing is, right, is that pace wise, because he's at a 97 for acceleration, 94 for sprint speed, this card, when you give him a dead eye chemistry style, First of all, first of all, he's he's versatile. You could definitely use him in most of the attacking positions. I would just say that if you're using him in the middle, uh, you just have to work with the dribbling a little bit more. But the thing is, too, is that the dribbling for cards like this is in the five star skills, right? The five star skills is what makes you dribble into areas very, very quickly. Attacking, yeah, I was very solid on the card. You guys know in the three, four, one, two video, I actually used him as a player playing in the cam position. A card like this, if I actually linked him up in my a team that exists nowadays, I would probably use him as my right mid on the dead eye chemistry side because I think boosting the passing as much as possible, the shooting as much as possible is what's going to work out best for this card. But like I said, he has a little bit of a physical thing to his dribble, but you don't mind it because he compensates well in the other areas of the card. And to be honest with you guys, like I get it. It's like rare gold Neymar. A lot of people are going to like this card more, blah, blah, blah. I like the flashback because the image is different and he actually play, he plays well in game. Like that's that's what it is for me personally, right? So um, definitely had to add him into uh, this tier list. Correa is another one. So Correa, like I mentioned in the review, he has gone he has gone back for the meta of the game. But what Correa offers, and this is something I'm going to explain to you guys for uh, most of the attackers in this game, is that when you originally play, and I mention this in the reviews all the time, when you originally play in the cam position or the striker area, but you have the right base mechanics and you have a high medium work rate, there is a very, very high chance that you're actually going to be good in the meta of the game, right? And that was the case with the Correa card. When I was using this card in the beginning of the year, I could not replace Correa with anybody. I mean, he's he's been added to an SBC recently. I know you guys can strike me down, blah, 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 like the rare gold card, but... You know, for my main account, I had to get Griezmann, so and he was one of the 83s, so I had to put him in. Uh, but this card, guys, this was a card that carried me for such a long period of the game. I could not find anybody that moved like him, but like the Benzema card, right, with Correa nowadays, the dribbling is the thing that you notice the most. Now, is it that big of a deal? Not necessarily, because if you give him the Hunter chemistry style, me dribbling with him in those specific scenarios where I'm doing, like, really stupid dribbles is for the review but i have to show that right i have to show you that you know his composure influences the way that he kind of like feels pressure i guess when he's actually dribbling uh and it was very noticeable when like players like trent and stuff put pressure on me but correa nowadays guys still has that really good attacking ai to get into those positions quickly be explosive to get into the areas at the right time and in this 3412 tactic the main thing that you have to work for is that one pass and then you just shoot the ball right away, right? So the players just have to be well positioned for that to work out consistently. Like I said, uh, I don't like him as much as I did in the game in the beginning because I do feel like he still needs a drastic upgrade. And because here's the thing, average body type, not as bad in the beginning of the game, especially the first two months. That's when I think that's when like Flashback Benzema was released as well. But average body type nowadays is really annoying in certain situations when you're attacking, right? That's why I keep telling you guys, Flashback Benzema's dribbling can be annoying from time to time, right? So, but Correa, you guys know foot legend for the team over here. Just a shame about his dribbling in regards to like composure with the average body type, right? Um, Icardi. So I'm going to tell you guys something right now, okay? If Icardi had the same attacking AI as Benzema, he would completely destroy Benzema, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that right now. He would completely destroy him because this card actually dribbles better than I thought it would because of his base card stats working really well for certain things. And very key thing here, right? If you take a look at the Icardi card, this card on an engine chemistry style, he has 85 agility. And I'm like, oh, that agility is going to be, it's going to be bothersome, right? But the important thing here is that he doesn't have an average body type. He has a unique body type. Honestly, the average body type, they got to chuck and throw out the window in FIFA nowadays. Like, it's just it's just not ideal, right? But his unique, it compensates really well for his dribbling. This is a card that you don't take strikes outside of the 18-yard box that often. You take your strikes mostly on the inside of the 18-yard box. And guess what? He still has 96 finishing with 94 shot power. But you have to utilize this card a certain way. In the tactic video for the 3-4-1-2, you guys saw that I have the same instructions for Icardi and for Benzema, right? 
but Icardi is more target man oriented and then push forward, right? Whereas Benzema is just boom, 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 boom constantly. But here's the thing. You give this card an engine chemistry style with his short passing being a 95, he actually sets up the play really nicely for other attackers in your team because he's playing as one of the two strikers. So Icardi is a card that I thoroughly enjoyed using. I still use him in my team nowadays because to be honest, once I take the strikes inside the 18 yard box, he still hits the ball really nicely. Okay, very, very good card. Guys, FIFA is a weird, a, a weird game. Cards are going to be weird from time to time, but you know how it is. Uh, Morales. Morales is another one. So again, uh, behind the meta of the game nowadays, of course, 100%. I'm not going to say that he isn't, but unique in his own ways. Why? Because here's the thing about this card. If this card was an SBC, I would tell you guys to complete this card as an SBC. 100%, okay? On a finisher chemistry style, to boost the shooting and the dribbling as much as possible, if you don't care too much about the pace, the card performs really well. He has the right attacking AI. Why? Because striker position, high medium work rates, lean body type, okay? Lean body type while being 5'11". So the dribbling actually works out really nicely for him, but mainly, mainly on an engine chemistry style. This card on an engine is really, really good. When I did the review for him, I was like, yo, this card is solid, okay? But, but... In some situations, you will notice the dribbling being annoying from time to time. So that's when you wish, like, hey, you know, I give him like a Hawk chemistry style, but the base dribbling stats, imagine if it was improved like that. For the dribbling, balance, and agility department, and then you give him a Hawk, he'd be better than Flashback Benzema, 100%. 100%. I, I, I know that Flashback Benzema still has the best attacking AI, but that dribbling and passing is a very big nuisance because engine chemistry style boosting passing like that is super helpful to have in the striker position because you guys know how you want to take like these quick sharp touches to pass the ball off to other players and you you know take a strike and you score your opportunity opportunities having the passing and having those quick dribbles is very important in any of the attacking positions but in some areas you compensate more than others right like for instance this griezmann card i have him on a hunter i don't really mind that too much uh vinicius jr another player that uh, is a card that a lot of people have used for the meta of the game uh, a lot for this year. Uh, guys, the thing about Vinicius Jr., right? And I think I'm saying this for every single card because I'm just cool in the to be honest. Uh, but Vinicius Jr. was one of the few cards this year where when I was using his rare gold card, and I think I gave him like a Deadeye Chemistry style, if I, remember, if I remember correctly, I didn't mind because it was the beginning of the game, right? Nowadays, I would, of course, right? But... I didn't mind his dribbling for what it was because of the stats that he had, which was interesting because look, five-star skill moves, four-star weak foot, he has the high medium work rate and he has a lean body type. So it's one of those situations where it's like, okay, if this card gets upgraded in any sort of way, he's going to be pretty good. The thing that he's always going to be lacking in, unless EA gives him some drastic changes here and there, is finishing because his base finishing attributes is really low, right? So even if you go to the headliners version of the card and you give them the Deadeye chemistry style, yes, the finishing is at a 93. But guys, you will always feel the default stats more than anything. And here's the thing about uh, Vinicius. I don't know why I keep saying that, but I keep doing it. Look at his dribbling stats. They don't look that crazy, right? They don't look that crazy. But this card feels very agile. I think it's his agility at a 99 that's compensating really well for it with 99 acceleration, 95 sprint, uh, 99 sprint speed with 95 stamina, right? So it's always a combination of different things that just makes these cards perform really well in game. And then obviously, if you give them the Deadeye chemistry style, you also boost the passing too. So you can use them in any attacking position. But again, base mechanics wise, you will notice the shooting being weird from time to time, right? Every card that is, even if they're full meta, there's always something wrong with it, right? Of course, but that's kind of how just FIFA works. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, I mentioned in the review, that his attacking AI is going to be very, very 50-50 for people because it is authentic attacking AI. It is a player that, you know, drops close, pushes forward, uh, sometimes moves into the side positions more than he moves into the middle. So there was moments where I actually gave him the stay central, get him behind because it just suited my play style way more. But if you don't mind that movement, this card is going to be a monster for you because he is the definition of jam, okay? Jam, like just scoring the most, you know, jammiest goals from time to time, just getting into really weird situations uh, to score his opportunities. Because guys, at the end of the day, his base card stats for certain positions on the card is really, really high, right? So on Ronaldo, with the engine chemistry style, with base card stats for shooting being really high, passing being improved by a lot, his high low work rates, it works out great. 
I will say though, okay, if he had flashback Benzema's attacking AI, if he had his high low work rate, this would be one of the best cards in the game, 100%. But that attacking AI, for me personally, it just throws me off a little bit, but he's still a monster. It's just that for the full meta aspect and for pro players, I can see some liking him and I can see some not liking him, depending on the situation, right? But still a monster of a card, really enjoyed using him. It's just the attacking AI is a little bit different. I know you guys see Murata in this team. Guys, don't get me wrong, Murata, he is behind of the meta of the game, but why is he here? Because he's unique in his own ways. Murata's card, you know, very similar situation to the Akardi card, right? But very different as well. Murata has a medium, medium work rate, right? Six foot three heights. Don't care about the skill moves being low because he has the four star weak foot. But this card is one of the few cards that surprised me because his medium, medium work rate is a good medium, medium work rate in game. And if you guys still want to watch some sort of gameplay of me using him, go watch the Spanish video. And when I'm uh, the Spanish foot chance video, when I was using the card, I was like, wow, Murata still has it. He adapts really well attacking AI wise. When I was doing the review for him, there was like certain movements that he was making in the right striker position where it surprised me. I'm like, this card looks like a high medium work rated player, but he's a medium medium work rated player. Like Icardi really feels like a medium medium work rated player, but Murata feels like a, like a like a top tier attacking AI medium medium. I don't know how to explain it to you guys, but he just moves across the pitch really nicely. Now, don't get me wrong for the meta of the game. You know, this is an SBC. Uh, for the meta of the game with the engine chemistry style uh, with Murata, you know, he's going to be lacking. I'm not going to say he's going to be like this amazing card. There's going to be people that are going to have some cards nowadays that are, you know, going to be all over this card, to be fair, right? But why did, why was this Murata better than I expected? Because he's got the unique body type, six foot three height. And look, he's kind of formatted like a Cardi a little bit because on the engine chemistry style, his dribbling is not as good as a Cardi's. I'm not going to say that it is. It's not as good as his, but... His unique body type, it compensates really well for his dribbling stats because the, the reason why he's being added into this, this list is because these are awful dribbling stats on an engine chemistry cell. They're really bad, but he still performs better even with those stats because his body type, it just works really well with his height. That's what the situation was for a card like this. So for me personally, uh, he's got to be added into the team because... I don't like physical strikers that much in FIFA, right? I always tell you guys like, oh, this is a physical type striker. Like, you know, you, you see Origi, for instance, like Origi is going to be better than this flashback Murata card. Okay, it is. But Murata was unique because his stats don't make sense. Okay, but Origi, especially after that upgrade on a finisher or an engine, going to be a very, very good physical type striker. Uh, Bernardo Silva needs to be added to this list because this card is so cheap compared to what we are getting nowadays. He is massively cheap for what he offers. Again, for Bernardo Silva, are there things wrong with the card? Absolutely. I'm not going to say there's not there's not things wrong with the card, okay? Because, you know, he has the three-star weak foot. You have to work with the weak foot. Uh, he has, you know, as a shorter player, sometimes players can all body him, whatever. This card on a Hunter chemistry style is amazing man he's so much fun to use because his dribbling is insane why because it's mid 90s and higher for all of the important stats his pace is at a 96 for acceleration so the fact that the acceleration is higher than the uh, sprint speed is very important and his shooting stats actually work really well it was funny because there was a point in the beginning of the year where i was actually using bernardo silva as the striker and he was actually performing really well for me as a striker but the problem was the weak foot because there's going to be moments where you're going to want to be able to hit some of those strikes and you can't, right? So at some point in Bernardo Silva, you know, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy using him as my attacking oriented center mid in a 4-1-2-2. Two, two. But I really enjoyed using him a lot in the cam position. Cam position, lamb, ram, mostly lamb because of my play style, usually being strong foot on the strong side because of the way that the attacking style works mostly for me. But a very good card, especially for the SBC price that he was at during that time period. The card has lasted a very, very long time. Uh, Michael Keane, again, a card a little bit behind in the meta of the game nowadays, but Robbie Keane, when I first reviewed him and still use him sometimes in the reviews nowadays, uh, he surprised me at the time. Why? Because he was one of the original people that essentially showed me that strikers that have the high medium work rate will most likely perform really well in this game. Because when I use this card for the review, on the Hunter chemistry style, I was very surprised because his dribbling stats do not look that good, right? Now, his dribbling stats nowadays, right, 
is going to be annoying to work with from time to time, just like the Benzema card is. But we're talking about a card that has really good attacking AI, that strikes the ball really well on a Hunter chemistry style, but you have to work with your opportunities mostly inside of the 18-yard box. That's what you have to do when you use a card like this. But guys, again, he has to be added because for a Foot Heroes, even if you use him nowadays, the card is still really good. And he's super cheap. So if you're someone that, you know... The fact that I'm seeing him for 39k, I can get him from my burner account with my boy and use him as a striker because I just realized he was 39k, which is kind of actually really low uh, for what he offers in game. But again, the reason why he's lower nowadays is because people are they're moving more towards the full meta teams, right? And that's where we're trying to go away from a little bit more. Full meta is like guys, like you guys have seen some of these squads that people have on foot champs and stuff. It is insane, okay? Uh, but next one, Phil Foden, dude, Phil Foden. So underrated, man. I'm telling you guys, this card is super, super underrated. I did a review for his Rule Breakers card at the time. It was a while ago that I reviewed the Rule Breakers. And I did it. It was a late review, too. I think I reviewed him like five days after he was released or something. And in that review, I don't think I scored a lot of goals with him, right? And people were like, oh, but you didn't score a lot of goals with him. Guys, it's like Giroud in the World Cup for France. I don't even think he had a shot on target, but he still offers something very important for the team, right? And that's what Phil Foden was for me. Guys, I'm telling you guys this right now. The cam position in FIFA is so specific for me this year, personally, because I literally, like, when I do drafts, sometimes I can't use certain cards in the cam position. They just don't move that well there, right? Phil Foden is kind of like a Fakir. He's kind of like a... Um, yeah, I would say he's like a Fakir. Even Defrel's card, but Defrel is, like, super behind the meta nowadays. But the, this Foden card, man, is so underrated. I, it's so weird to... And it's weird and it's not weird to see people like using these cards and not using these cards because he's 435k for the team of the year nominee. But man, this card, take a look at him. So most people are giving him either the Hawk or the Hunter. So it's going to depend on play style and what you want the most, right? I would personally give him a Hunter chemistry style because guys, this card's dribbling stats while being five foot seven with a lean body type, this is a super fun card to use. I'm not saying like, oh my God, guys, he's only fun oriented. Like you guys see in the reviews, like, hey guys, this is a fun concept card. No. This card is sick because there are very few cards that will move like this Phil Foden card in the cam position with his high medium work rate, especially on a Hunter chemistry style, while on top of that, being a left footed player with 90 stamina. So if you use a card like this in that 4122 tactic video where your cam acts like a left mid or right mid, depending on how you're defending, right? Because that's literally the glitch in the game. He's a monster because he has the stamina, he attacks like a beast. It's just an underrated card because his base card stats for passing is also very, very good. And I'm very surprised I don't see him that often. There was actually a guy uh, that I faced, I think it might have been like a week or two ago, where he was using him in the team and he was doing work for him, bro. Like he, didn't, he scored like one goal when I was doing like a review for somebody. I can't remember who it was, but I was like, man, like this Phil Foden card is kind of like hard to deal with. Like this card is crazy underrated and i understand it because the price of the card is at a 435k so not a lot of people are gonna be like hey i'm gonna buy this card for 435k i get that but if you were to pack this card you're so lucky because he is so much fun to use for this game dribbling is good with the body type shooting comes off great it's just a very nice card i thoroughly enjoy using him in the cam position you can even use him as a striker as a left mid the fact that he can dribble as well as he does with 90 stamina you can use him as a left mid too and he'd be crazy okay Last but not least, Salah's card. I have to add Salah in the list for this one in regards to him being unique and him being like good meta because I personally hated Salah every single year of FIFA. Every single year. I hated him. I was like, eh, you know, the card's like cool, blah, blah, blah. No, every year I hated him, okay? When I, when I talk like that, yeah, guys, card's like a cool concept card, you know? Chalked, okay? Chalked. This card is nuts this year. I don't know if you guys have ever faced people that use this card as like a super sub, but, and I always tell people this, okay? Yeah, he has a three-star weak foot. The three-star weak foot's super unfortunate. Don't get me wrong, okay? If they if they ever give him a four-star weak foot, it's gonna be crazy, but his base card stats for shooting is really high, okay? He has 97 finishing. So even if you do get into shooting opportunities on that three-star weak foot, if you work the high percentage strikes as much as possible, it'll work out nicely. But the thing about this card, is these two traits again, man. The fact that he has the outside foot shot trait with the finesse shot trait, with people mostly giving him a hawk. Look at his shooting stats. With those traits, with a Salah body type, which works very differently this year than it has in any other year of FIFA. Like when they have like their own body type, it's just significantly different. With 
mid 90s and up for dribbling sats, right? On a Salah body type. This card is nuts, okay? If you were able to pack him, you're so lucky because he is crazy fun to use in this game with those meta shooting traits base card stats for dribbling being super high i'm telling you guys like you guys have probably seen it in some of the reviews as well i get into the in certain positions when i'm using him as like a left striker for instance like i, I like him mostly on the sides but you can use him anywhere you want in the attack when i was using him as a left striker there's a point when i was doing a review for a formation where i literally just took the strike outside of the 18 yard box because i knew he would score it if I green time the shot because of this absolutely insane trait, the outside foot shot trait when you're shooting is essentially perfect is nuts. Okay. It's nuts. Trincao's dribbling is awful. It is awful. But when you shoot with him across goal, because he has that trait, it's so good. But his base card stats for shooting is not even that high, but imagine a card, right? That does have the base card stats for shooting on the Hawk chemistry style craziness but uh yeah guys that's pretty much it you guys are gonna see cards that are not in this list like listen i have a secondary list here i'm not as passionate towards them because you guys know that i try to look for cards that have a super unique feel to them but that play well in the middle of the game so you guys are gonna see a bunch of cards in this uh, in this list right here where um i think i'm missing Lewandowski. Lewandowski was the only other card that i was like thoroughly missing from this Lewandowski. I'm not adding Martial because I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't really like that card. What do you mean? Not, oh, because of the goalkeeper. I'm not adding that card because I'm not, I'm not crazy about him personally. I'm not, I'm just, it's just not going to happen. I already have him in the team. Oh, he's in the center mid position. Okay, perfect. Uh, these cards, uh, the only other person that I would be super passionate about is Ibrahimovic. I would add him into that first team for this unique factor, for this really, really sick thing to him. Ibrahimovic. I, is the last one I'm going to like thoroughly review because the other ones I think are good cards, but they're not like I'm not like really like on top of them. You know what I'm saying? Like in regards to like this really special feel to them. Don't get me wrong, guys. Listen, some of these cards you see here in the second list, they are better than a lot of the cards in the first list. But I always search for this super unique feel. Like, don't get me wrong. Wurtz, awesome. Gabriel Jesus, awesome. Uh, Ferran Torres on an engine, awesome. Brahim Diaz, pace is really low, but on a marksman was really cool. Paul Tano was sick. Uh, Sterling... This one specifically, you know, left-footed with the four-star, four-star capabilities, high, medium work rates, good stamina and stuff to have, you know, playing in any of the attacking areas. Not good stamina, but 84 is like a decent cutoff to use them through the side or the mid positions. Uh, was great. And you can see a bunch of other cards here. So Martial's here, but, you know, like I wasn't like crazy about him. There's Calvert-Lewin, you know, not crazy on the floor, but it has a unique thing to him because he's good in the air. Um... Aubameyang, way too expensive, way too expensive, but, uh, you know, very good card to use in the meta of the game, too. I would say that the the other unique cards that I would love in this team is going to be Wurtz, because Wurtz is like kind of like a foot legend here, too, because when I reviewed his player of the month, I mentioned to people how much potential that card actually had. And with that version of the card, he actually performs really well. Again, uh, strays away from the meta of the game a little bit in certain aspects, but very good. So it would be, for this second list, it would probably be... For uniqueness, it would be Wurtz, Ferran Torres on an engine. I actually, I actually like him a lot on that. Um, Origi, Ibrahimovic. But the rest of these cards, I could have put them all the way at the end here. I'm sorry. But the rest of these cards, you know, the, you, this, the players that you see on the bench, Martial's all the way at the end. But these cards, they're all nice in their own ways, right? But that first list is the one that I'm like really passionate about for the way that these cards actually moved across the page. So, guys, don't get me wrong. There is a bunch of really good cards that suit the meta of the game nowadays but what i search for is players that are unique that have that crazy attacking ai that move across the pitch nicely that have certain variables for the price that they offer that just performs a really really good way in game so uh yeah 43 44 minute video for that but i know that a lot of you guys actually asked for this because it is a big thing that i talk about uh in the player reviews in regards to you know attacking ai and all that good stuff but yeah hopefully you guys enjoy this video today i'll catch you guys for the next one peace out dudes love you guys